is the inside of that basilica with the tomb of Saint Anthony. What do we take from the life of Saint Anthony? I think I want all of these saints. What do we take from his life for ourselves? Remember I said about Pope Benedict's life, the faith is not a triumphal march. It's a journey marked by sufferings and love, trials and faithfulness. And looking at this too, remember that Francis, uh, Anthony wanted to be a martyr. But God had, had a different plan for him. And he worked that plan through sickness. It's incredible how many saints have met God in sickness. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, for example, remember? He, he was on a, on a sick bed where he, he led the life, read the life of Christ. The, his ship was blown off course. So often our ships are blown off course, huh? In our married lives, with our kids, whatever, it can be difficulties, tragedies. And exactly there, God is meeting us. This is the first point. God is present always, even in the trials and tragedies of life. The second thing, you know that Anthony had all of these great talents, great gifts, but he didn't boast of them. In fact, remember He's there sitting at a refectory one day and, and his gifts come to light there. I think that's so, so incredible. Right? He becomes this great teacher and preacher, dying so young at the age of 36, but touching so many lives. I, we can be young, we can be young, we can be old, but we can touch others by our lives today. And the third thing that Anthony bequeaths to us is prayer. Is prayer. It's really interesting because Anthony talks about prayer in some of his sermons. And he speaks of prayer as that uh, loving relationship by which we speak gently with God. And he says there are four steps to prayer. I think that can really help us today. Those of us wanting to pray, trying to pray better. He says the first step in prayer is simply to open your heart to God. Just be there. Open your heart to God in silence. Uh, just no, no words, nothing. Just say, open your heart to God. The second point is, he says, the second step uh, is to speak with him as a friend. Just speak with him affectionately as you would with your best friend, with a mother, who, a child, whoever it is, just naturally presenting our needs to him, and naturally presenting our needs to him. The third thing is praising and thanking God, uh, praising and thanking God. Uh, so the first step, open my heart to God. The second thing, present to him my needs. The third thing is simply waiting, waiting for God to answer in whichever way he wants, but with confidence, with trust, I know he's going to answer. Remember Solanus Casey? He says to thank God ahead of time. And that's what we do in the fourth step. We thank and praise God. Finally, St. Anthony leaves us such an important lesson on preaching the word of God. I just we wish we had more courageous preachers like St. Anthony today. That applies to me as well. And just at this too, why don't we spend just a few couple of moments praying? Whatever our need is, whatever our anxiety is, I think of Deb's mother, Margaret, but each one of us has someone, something to pray for. Just as St. Anthony recommends, why don't we simply close our eyes or whatever we wish as we hear these words of St. Anthony and present that need to God through his intercession. If you preach Jesus, St. Anthony says, he will melt hardened hearts. If you invoke him, he will soften harsh temptations. If you think of him, he will 
enlighten your mind. If you read of him, he will satisfy your deepest longing. Saint Anthony of Padua, pray for us.